Welcome back to The Dagger, an NBA analysis channel. Guys, today we're going to talk about Montrez Harrell, but before we do, I want to thank everyone for all the support back on the Dennis Schroeder video that I put up a couple weeks ago. Got over 200,000 views out of absolutely nowhere, so thank you guys for that. I'm actually doing this video because in the comments section, you guys asked me to cover Montrez, so we are going to talk about what Trez has been doing with the Lakers so far in the preseason, and we're actually going to take a little bit of a deeper dive into what he was doing last year with the Clippers to kind of see what we can expect this year. Uh, at the time of me recording this video, he has not played with LeBron or AD yet. We are going to see a lot of that this year. But guys, before we get into the video, please hit that like button. It really helps support the channel. I don't make any money off of these videos, so it would really help a lot. And also hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss another video. All right, guys. So let's get into some film analysis of our sixth man of the year, Montrez Harrell. So a lot of people know that Montrez won sixth man of the year in the 1920 season with the Los Angeles Clippers, but a lot of people don't realize that he also won the Hustle Award, which is awarded to players that make the energy and effort plays to help their teams win throughout the season. Now, if you watch Montrez play, you're gonna get excited. He jumps up and down a lot, he pounds his chest a lot, you hear him barking and jawing at other players, and he brings a lot of positive energy to his team. This is the one area we're going to look at today that is not quantifiable, but I just wanted to say that Trez actually does back up his chest pounding and barking with actual stats and contributions on the court, unlike a certain Clipper point guard. All right, so now that we got the obligatory Patrick Beverly slander out of the way, let's talk about Montrez and his actual statistical contributions. We're gonna start by talking about his rebounding and he actually averaged 2.6 offensive rebounds per game last year. That is very good. And for a guy coming off the bench, that is exactly the type of energy and effort that you want. He's never gonna give up on a board. And that means a lot for a guy that is actually undersized for his position. He plays power forward and center and he stands at six foot eight, which is not short in general, I mean, if you were standing next to a six foot eight guy in real life, you'd be like, damn, that guy's tall. But I mean, for a power forward center, that's pretty short. He's undersized at that position. We are gonna talk about how he makes up for that in a little bit, but one of the ways that he does it is simply by never giving up on a rebound. And he actually ends up tipping back a lot of his own shots. He's really good at that. That's probably one of his best skills is self putbacks. And he also gets quite a few putback dunks for his teammates as well. Really fun to watch on the offensive boards in general. If you've watched any Montrez Harrell games whatsoever, you can tell almost immediately that he is not what you would call a traditional big man. I don't even know what a traditional big man is in 2020 anymore because the position has changed so much. But yeah, something that's important to know about Montrez is that he's not a post-up player. He much prefers the face-up game. You're not gonna see him with his back to the basket too much, although he can do that a little bit, but he falls within the 84th percentile in isolation. And this is gonna be important for Montrez because as mentioned, he is an undersized big man. So he can't really rely on his height and his weight too much to score. He's gonna rely on his quickness and his handles, which are actually pretty impressive for a power forward. So definitely keep an eye out for his face-up isolation game this year. So when doing research for this video, one thing that I found is that finding transition stats for individual players is actually pretty difficult. But just going by the eye test, Montrez is a really effective player in transition. He uses that athleticism that we talked about to just get down the court faster than a lot of his opponents. You'll see in a lot of these clips that he is just way up ahead of the defense. And this is gonna be important because the Lakers were second in the NBA in transition points per game last year. We saw how often that LeBron liked to throw that touchdown pass down court to Anthony Davis, who is another one of these players that'll just find themselves way down the court before the defense has a chance to get back in transition. So I think that Montrez is gonna fit in perfectly. We can see that he can actually handle the ball at times in transition too. So he is gonna be an absolute monster and get a lot of easy opportunities on fast breaks this year. So 
So Montrezl Harrell actually averaged 1.3 points per possession as a roller, which is 10th in the league in the 1920 season. Basically what that means is as the receiver on the pick and roll, he was really friggin' good, top 10 in the league. And if you watch a lot of these clips, something that you might notice is that he actually likes to slip more often than he does a traditional roll. So he'll go to set the screen and before he even makes contact with the defender, he'll just slip right to the basket very quickly. And more than any other part of the game, I would say that this is where he eats. This is his bread and butter right here, the pick and slip. We're gonna see it a lot, especially with LeBron James and Dennis Schroeder as the ball handlers this year. Now we've talked about how undersized Montrez is. He's six foot eight, which is small for a power forward and especially small for a center. However, it is important to note that he does have a wingspan of 7'4". And just for context there, Anthony Davis's wingspan is 7'6". So despite being short, he is pretty long and he uses his athleticism to increase his verticality as well. So he can really jump, he can get up there, use that wingspan. And this is important not only on defense, which is obviously a weak spot and an area that he needs to improve, but it's important as a lob threat as well. The Lakers obviously lost two of their biggest lob targets in free agency with Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee on the way out, but I don't think they're gonna miss him that much with Montrez Harrell there. And while they're not gonna be getting a lot of lobs to old man Marc Gasol, Montrez can definitely make up for a lot of what they lost. So guys, having said all that, there are still some concerns with Montrez Harrell. A lot of them have been talked about ad nauseum already. Uh, we know that he did not have a great showing this past playoffs. I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that he did lose his grandmother and he was grieving. That's a legitimate uh, concern and something that could legitimately be an excuse for someone not playing too well. He also is not a great defender and that's not just a playoff thing, that's just in general. He needs to get better, uh, you know, in several different areas defensively. And finally, he's really not a good passer. Uh, he does need to get a little bit better at passing out of double teams and things like that. Thankfully, he doesn't turn the ball over too much, so it's not that much of a negative. But guys, those are my thoughts on Montrez Harrell. Let me know in the comments section who you want me to cover next. I'm not going to be a Lakers only channel, so try and pick somebody that's not a Laker that you'd be interested in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. And thanks for watching, guys.